Siegeners and welcome back. We're here with another Room 2 Siege for you today and today we are starting this one off quickly as we have the Swaby sallying out here on some Levy Freeman that they've managed to hit here. We have some Noble Riders that have absolutely annihilated this poor spear unit here. And it's actually the general for the Swaby here that sallied out in this risky sort of charge. It's been backed by some spear wall here so as you can see the Noble Horse coming out to uh, sort of you know scare off that general. And it looks like uh, the Spear Wall here are also going to have uh, a bit of fun. They're going to uh, javy the Noble Horse first. Inflicted a fair few casualties before rejoining that fight with their uh, general there. But yes, a nice little sally out there, slowing down the attack of the attack. Instead, the Levy Freeman uh, being routed and the uh, tower here being abandoned. And as you can see, the uh, Noble uh, Riders here still being attacked by the Noble Horse. The uh, archers on the wall looks like we've got some Kimbri bow women are trying to keep these uh, noble horse at bay, and they are inflicting a fair amount of casualties, as you can see here. So, really, really nice start to battle. A bit of back and forth stuff straight away. But yes, the teams here today: we have the Swaby, we have the Nervii, and we have the Seleucids, and they are defending at Berdegal here against uh, Egypt, Carthage, and Galatia. So, a nice three v three here in today's Rome two siege battle. I'm looking forward to seeing some ancient chaos and seeing who is going to win out of these, uh, these great factions here. We have the Libyan Hoplite landing on the walls first. Celtic Warriors here waiting for them. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Well, I mean, these Hoplites are probably going to get mauled here because they can't form Hoplite Wall. So it's good. it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how well they do. I imagine pretty poorly. We'll put up the uh, unit stats so you guys can see how many kills they're getting. And as you can see already, these Celtic Warriors are racking up the kills with not even a loss to their name. Very, very nice. Um, but yes, so it looks like Carthage has gone with a very much a, a heavy sword fact, like like heavy swords. They can bring a lot of spears and pikes, but it looks like they've gone for, you know, their elites. The Samnites, which have chevroned up really well. Noble fighters here. We've got, yeah, Mercenary Scutiari. Got Libyan Infantry, uh, which are a fair few of those. Yeah, typical sort of Carthage build, I feel like. And we've got, yeah, uh, some archers back here. I feel like the only way you'd maybe change this is maybe bring some pikes just to add that sort of uh, versatility to your game. We've got a Hellenic Royal Guard being brought by Egypt. So they are bringing the pikes. They got the memo. It's a siege, and they're going to need some pikes probably for choke points. Galatian Royal Guard and reserves to carry an axeman. But they have got a lot of Thorax here ready to load off in this first wave, and they're already uh, doing so here. This unit has lost 50 men already. That must be to javelins, uh, or to artillery, maybe. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, the thorax on the land. That, yeah, this is a, a pretty beaten up unit. Another one landing here, but also in a pretty bad state. So yeah, looks like the thorax are already taking a fair few losses. It looks like Galatia, I imagine, is bringing the legionary spam. Yeah, that is the case. I like how they're protecting their uh, ballistas as well. But uh, it seems a little excessive, that's for sure. Seems very excessive, and they're going to send up another uh, Levy Freeman to go and try and take this uh, take this tower on. Or it might be the same one. I actually, it might be the same one to be honest. But yeah, the fighting has already got underway, and it looks like we've got Thorax swords. They're chewing through these hillmen here of the Seleucids. It's like the Diadochi Wars all over again. Seleucids versus Egypt. We'll see who comes out on top today. Yes, if you're enjoying the Rome Two Sieges, I would like to see some more of this sort of thing. They do remember to leave a like and subscribe if you're on here and I'm sure you support guys it really does help out the channel. And yes, you can see here the Hillman losing decisively. No surprise there. Yeah, actually the Egyptians here they are losing. They are being beaten by the Hillman. I think they they must have pulled through to get to this to get to where they are here. On one side's pulled through that's for sure these Hillman here are, um yeah the wrong way. Like they <laughs> the defender should be that side up this side. So yeah, it looks like they're going to get surrounded here to the helm and they're getting jabbed to the back by Thorax and they should probably get killed off pretty quickly. It looks like we're going to see fierce swords of the Nervii as well being shifted over here to support this line. And as you can see, Seleucids don't have enough Hillman here to hold the line. And yeah, the Nervii have been put into place to, hold, to fill any gap that is being made. And you can see, yep, there you go. They've done just that job. The Thorax here Landing on mass, one is already wavering, but it looks like they're going to take a few hillmen with them. But the cost of the hillmen is much less than the cost of the thorax. But they need to be ripping through these units of the uh, Egyptians. If they want to make sure that they have some good, steady progress. I'm sure Luke has got some more elites further back that he's going to bring up. 
Uh, well, I mean, we've got Thoros Spears back here. We've got Royal Peltas, which looks like coming up. We've got his own Thorax being shifted forward as well. Egyptian archers and Cretan archers now coming in. Yeah, he needs you to get their archer fire, you know, bombarding these positions here. And, you know, just trying to, you know, maybe turn the battles in favor of them. Because that's how you win these sword fights. Yeah, you can see a Fierce Swords winning decisively against Thorax. So they need to try and get angles to try and give them a little bit more support in those sorts of fights. Egypt is going in basically alone at the moment as well. So this is not really great coordination from his uh, teammates. They should really be attacking all at once. Like, Galatia's not even ready. Like, his uh, tower's on the wall. And it would allow the defenders to shift more troops, more reserves towards Egypt. Defeat Egypt and then uh, defeat the other two armies as they land. But they need to be careful that you can see Swaby's shifting troops along the line. And it looks like Nervio obviously has already started doing that. And yeah, he got his uh, fierce swords in here again, fighting against Thorax, and again he's uh, he's winning this fight. These uh, fierce swords are pretty bloodied up already. But they love it. They're Celts. They love the uh, the sounds and tastes and smells of battle. You can see the Thorax swords. Yeah, routing one's gone. Another one is now going into the breach and going into this fight. 89 out of 160. He's probably not going to win that fight. These first swords are racking up kills. Yeah, 90 on that one already. This one's at 106. They're doing very, very well. These Egyptians are, yeah, struggling, that's for sure. Carthage has now landed. Mercenaries Gutierrez, his Spanish mercenaries, joining the fight here. Looks like he's going to try and silence his Thoros spears, which is a good idea. Yeah, these two, uh, these two factions. Look at like the, just the difference in sort of armor and like sort of style. Like, these guys just never would have really come across each other. Like the Egyptians, I guess, might be like, oh, these guys kind of look like Galatians, which they kind of do in a way. But, like, who the heck are these people? What language are they speaking? It's so confusing. Carthage might have an idea who the heck uh, the Seleucids are, though, because you know the Phoenicians are the. Uh, the Carthaginians, you know, they're great traders. They, they, they got about. We've got Thorax. Yeah, I mean, you can see Egypt is slowly breaking through this. Thorax here, if he can route this fierce sword quickly, he can then get into the back of Thorax Swords here in Hillman, and he can start to maybe uh, allow so to win some battles. It actually has pulled out of that combat thinking it had won that fight against the fierce swords. They are finished yet. Oh, a beautiful shot there from the Ballista. See, so the Saluka player here turning the Ballista around and firing point blank into all of those... Uh, so the Thorax are now recharging his line. He's trying to support his Hillman as best as he can. And more javelins coming in as well. Who's throwing those? Oh, it's the Royal Peltas, which are renowned for having multiple rounds of like uh, of javelins. They can throw. They can throw about four, I think, compared to like the typical sort of swordsman. Throw about two. Yeah, they're all Peltas, they're in here. They're battling away now. They should overwhelm these uh, Thorax. They have better quality, better stats. They're just not as heavy. Yeah, the heavy melee infantry have been very heavy, but a 62 melee attack, very, very good. And yeah, you can see here, yeah, they're already racking because 110 they've already got. Carthage needs to land more troops, and Galatia needs to get a move on. Yeah, you can see here that the uh, Mercy Scutiari, actually, they're holding okay. Thoros Spears, looks like they're going to route these guys. The Scutiari are not too bad, doing okay. But yeah, Egypt's looking horrific right now. I mean, he landed a lot of Thorax. I don't know, I can't remember how many it was. As many as eight, maybe. And now he's losing his Cretans. I don't know if these guys still have ammo, but his Cretans are in here. And they're getting mauled by fierce swords. And what a waste these guys still have ammunition. These elite archers. But he needs to get these, uh, yeah, these his missiles. He's doing a good job of like focusing down units here. So what he should have done is just landed in, in this area here and just focused it down with archers and just tried to win the uh, the range fight. But yeah, his first wave and pretty much his only wave he has, which is Thorax Swords, is defeated. He's gonna have to rely on his allies now to do a lot of the heavy lifting, like the Galatians and the Carthaginians. 
Yeah, there's Thorax losing as well. We are seeing a Karen Axman here. That's actually managing to beat the uh, Thoros Spears here. So that's something, I guess, you know. And yeah, you can see Carthage and Glacier now landing. Looks like they're going to be facing off against Swaby and what remains of Nervii here in this position, which is still quite a lot. There's still a lot of Celtic Warriors here, some more fierce swords. I mean, you'd imagine that these Salmonites will absolutely rip through the Celtic swords. The Celtic Warriors. We'll see. There's a lot of bodies, like I said, down here. A lot of losses for the defenders, but certainly I think more for the attackers. Balance power is looking pretty dead even, maybe ever so slightly in favour of the attackers. Which is, you know, good sign for the defenders that they've done a very good job so far. That balance of power you can sort of follow as a guide. Give you an idea how both sides are doing. How likely either side's going to win. Like, yeah, the Thurios Spears here. Gonna get around a bit. It's fine because they've got more allies from Nervia. And here we go. Galatia is also going in. He's taking on Swaby. And these Legionnaires are, are pretty good. I mean, they've got, yeah, 40 melee attack. Bloodsworn also have 40 melee attack, though. So, you know, both sides fairly evenly matched. But Bloodsworn are light melee infantry. Uh, they will struggle there. But the Galatians, yeah, winning slightly most of these fights here. I mean, certainly this is a good fight here for Galatia. They should be getting up archers. Uh, have they got any back here? Uh, did they bring an all? No, there are their archers. Mercery Syrian archers. Get them round the flank, and he is just now giving the order. Fire into the side of the spear wall here, and you can do a lot of damage and really turn that fight in favor of the legionnaires there fighting in that. It looks like, because they're doing exactly the same, are the Swaby there, shooting into the set flanks of these Galatians. And they actually did a really good job here of the uh, Galatians. Well, this one's done very well. 61 kills, barely any losses. This one's looking pretty beat up by now. It's Carthage now going in with his Scutiar and his Samnites. And he's carving through these uh, lighter Celtic Warriors right now. Like the Celtic Warriors really excel if they can get off all their javelins and if they can be supported by archers. That's how you're going to really do well with these guys. Like the light infantry needs support from other units, whether it's missiles, whether it's another heavier infantry unit, or whether it's pike. The Samnites fighting in here. Yeah, I mean, the Silver Chevron, 44 melee attack. Yeah, against 27. It's, it's not really fair. But here we go. It looks like you can see the Bloodswarm uh, unit on the wall here. Actually trying to jabby the Syrian Archer, trying to keep these guys at bay. Quite smart there by the player. I really should just be using Archers to silence these uh, Syrians if you can. And it looks like, yeah, Galatians also trying to flank around on the wall. They're actually silencing that Bloodswarm unit on the wall that was jabbing there. Really nice move. And now the Galatians, if they can push on, they can go down the wall and then try and flank the spear wall as well if they want to give that a go. A bit of blobbing up. Ah, oh, it's not blobbing up at all. Carthage actually cycling out his units. I'm not such a fan of this. I mean, it's also only active. It's not like it's too tired. Because I feel like you lose men unnecessarily. But then I guess you can argue that like a tired unit, you lose more men than a tired unit fighting. So maybe it works out well, I don't know. But yeah, Royal Peltas, they're losing in this fight. 182 kills these guys have got already, and they are, like, getting good kills. Okay, so we are back. Unfortunately, yeah, the replay was for some reason just a little jittery, so I just kind of, like, let it run a little bit. But we are back. As you see, Sam Knight's here still carving away. And it looks like over here, Glacier is starting to, uh, to falter. He's going to need some more reinforcements. It looks like Carthage is going to be the answer. The Libyan infantry coming forward there. And another Sally out here. And uh, this is very, very bold here from Swaby. Because there is already Galatian infantry waiting here. So the general here is going to be fighting both cavalry and also infantry. And this is really bold from the general. This no Nova Rider might not get back inside. This infantry support is blood sworn out here. Also getting wavered or wavering. I think that's from the cab charge here. The Noble Horse clattering into them. And this could be very, very costly here for Swaby if this goes wrong. And yeah, you can see they're going to try and get back inside, but the oil is both going to hurt friend and foe. You need to be very careful with that. And he might be able to... I mean, they also could get cut off here anyway. The Galatians could block the gate. 
and stop him from coming in. That's what they should have done. But yeah, it looks like the general has got back inside. Is he still alive? He is still alive at the moment. My gosh. Very, very lucky. Swaby generally won't be trying that again. Uh, yeah, Egypt over here basically eradicated. Egypt's last remaining forces are his like, archers, by the looks of it, and his pikes and his general, which is Quranian axemen. So, uh, yeah, it would be surprised if he uses that. Uh, general has died for Swaby. Oh, he got caught here by the uh, Galatians. So there you go. That is Swaby now without a general. And that could be devastating for the attack, uh, for the defenders and their morale. Maybe not so for these swordmasters that are going in. These are at least, yeah, he just is piling in everything now. Swaby. And he is slightly pulling through. He needs to be careful he doesn't do that. He needs to be very careful. But yeah, Swaby, now without a general, that is going to do a lot of damage to morale for him. Might just give the attacks of Ibn in. And it is definitely the balance power ever so slightly in favor of uh, of the attackers. Whether that is because of the loss of the general, or whether it's because Carthage and Galatia are starting to turn around the earlier setbacks that were put in place by Egypt. See here, yeah, the Thorax and the Royal Peltas, they're not doing so great. These Celtic Warriors as well, getting javied in the side by uh, the Samnites here. And the uh, Celtic Warriors just said they do really well with their sort of more heavy infantry support. They've lost that here on this side. The Royal Peltas are broken. And they are suffering. Yeah, he's still cycling out these, uh, these units. I don't know how well it, it does work. I mean, these units got 185 kills and this one's got 130. So it, it can't be going wrong. And uh, yeah, really Carthage can break through here. Like this Libyan could just flank on around. I don't know why he hasn't. I mean, he, he had a quick opportunity, but the Hillman have quickly stopped that. It was a very small window to give it a go. There you go, the Hillman. 19 kills. Yeah, they've not done a lot. There you go, the uh, Swabia defeated that little incursion here by the Galatians. That is cost them a general. They still have some decent units and sword masters here, and they still got the Blood Sworn as well. We actually have a uh, Celtic Scorpion up here already firing, I'd just like to say as well. The range on these things is incredible. I uh, don't know what it's firing into. Has it got many kills? I don't know. 49, it's not bad. Uh, Egypt is landing. Egypt had so. Oh, yeah, it's got Galatian Royal Guard left, of course, still have these guys. This is a landing is elites now. So these uh, Celtic warriors serving the pharaoh of Egypt. Now here, ready to uh, get some revenge after seeing so many of their comrades die. And there's not much to stop them. You can see here, Seleucus have not got a lot. There's tiny little units of Royal Peltas and Hillman there. Is that all that's defending that flank? There is another Royal Peltas here. We're going to need to see more being sent forward. Oh, Nervia has got some good reserves. Oh, Swar, we've got four units, and then we have a Noble Horse General as well. So there's some good units that can go in to try and stop that Galatian Royal Guard. And I think Oswan uh, generally have the uh, sort of better stats than the Galatian Royal Guard. I mean, let's see, 48 melee attack, 45 weapon damage. 50 we uh, melee attack, 45 weapon damage. It's going to be close, that's for sure. Armor 75, armor 80 for the Oswan, so they have a bit more armor. Yeah, it's going to be close, that's for sure, in that sort of matchup when we come to that. And over here, you can see the uh, Swordmasters are getting very much stuck in. The Samnites here might have been enough more than they can chew. I think they are getting beaten back now. Yeah, they're actually winning of the, of the uh, Swordmasters. There's Libyans in here and Samnites all losing. But they are fairly tired, very bloodied units, so uh, it's understandable. Spear wall here. I mean, I don't know why they haven't just shot into the side of that, unless the archers and stuff got killed, but I don't think they did. Yeah, they just got moved over here, the Syrian archers. They could have definitely broke through that choke point so much easier and quicker. They just supported with archers. Galatia coming in to support this fight here. Looks like Swaby's going to retreat. He's pulling back his sword masses. A little blood sworn unit is being uh, used to sort of hold the line and defend that retreat. light swords throwing down their lives in the name of their chief that's fallen 
And they're shaken, but not quite stirred just yet. Bloodstorm fights are very low. I think they must have they must have incredible morale. Yeah, 58 morale. Very, very good. <laughs> Look at this. These poor Salukas boxed in. Can they go through there? I think they can, can they? Yeah, they're just boxing in that tiny little spot. And the uh the Galatian Sword's just gonna maul these guys. But they might fall into a little trap here. Look at all these javelins and missiles coming in. So yes, Luke had now unleashing his Persian light archers. He's firing to the side of these uh, Galatians and he's already killed about 10 of them. Nice little trap there. I mean, they can still hold here. I don't know why they don't. They hold here and then they shoot into the back with the Persian lights. What they should do with the plan I would do, just hold there. Maybe hold, um, maybe here as well, maybe? Or just hold on that line. That would work as well, holding here. Which I think is what they're going to do. You can see the Royal Pelt has some fierce swords getting ready to hold there. Yeah, this Galatian Royal Guard already down to 98. Not already fighting either, I just like to say. I don't know. It's, they've told it to retreat and then it's just been chased by the uh, Royal Pelt. There we go. There you go, Royal Peltas, they retreat. They're going to try and do the same thing again. The Royal Guards are going to fall for it. They're going to go back into that corner and get shot again in the side by Persian Light, light Archers. And it looks like also we're seeing some Syrian Archers being brought up. They're going to start dueling and getting rid of these Persian Lights. And there you go, that is uh, the arch problem sort of dealt with temporarily. But there is more Archers up here, and there's more units up here generally. There's Pikemen as well being kept in reserve by the uh, Seleucids, so they are trying to, you know, keep them out of the way of Archer Fire, keeping them for the last stand, perhaps, when the uh, when the attackers have no ammo left. There's still, I'd like to say, reserves outside the walls here. Galatians, with a lot of silver chevrons, also have a Celtic Skirmisher, which I guess maybe has been kept in reserve for Archers. I'm sorry, for Pikemen. Yeah, most of these other legionaries are not even chevroned up. So they are being revered to those two silver chevron ones as the elites. Yeah, Carthage has broken through. He's dealt with those Nervii sort of remnants. There isn't a lot of healthy infantry left. Like Glacier's got a couple of units sort of in the hundreds. We've got this one here. It's 159. It's probably the healthiest. 160 there, actually. Another one. But yeah, Egypt's obviously not got much healthy infantry left. He's still got his pikes, which are going to be very important. Carthage has still got his noble fighters, which are like, the cream of his army that are left, the cream of the crop. Um, so they're still alive and some living infantry as well to go in and some Salmonites by the looks of it. Li uh, really Carthage looks like he's going to be the sort of the main fighting force when it comes to infantry. These Galatian Royal Guards are being thrown in as we speak. They're taking a lot of casualties on their way in. Uh, you know, already lost about 15, 30 men that one has. Just send them in. I mean, what are you doing standing here? You might as well just go in. They're just getting shot up for free here. And unless they've got javelins that they want to throw, which is, uh, I guess, fair enough. But just get in there and just like do what damage you need to do. And there you go. The javelins are thrown. Royal Peltas here, you know, getting as much damage done to them as possible. Like, I don't know why these guys were sent up first. Like, Egypt is just keen to get in there and try and, I guess sort of remedy his uh, mistakes he made earlier. But I mean, really it should be Carthage going in. He's got the sort of the, the weaker infantry. It's still good infantry. Libyan infantry is good. But um, it's either them or the Galatian Legionnaires should be going in. Should not be sending in these elite Royal Guard just yet. Yeah, it looks like uh, Galatia over here chasing down the Swaby again. I Swaby really not getting the hint that he needed to fall back. The Legionnaires here desperate to try and get these sword masters. They did not get them. And they aren't going to get the blood sword either. So there you go. Bit of a waste there. And the sword masters. Uh, Swayze's making a very strange line. Usually you see the defenders defend sort of where the sword masters are here because they can get support from this ledge. Uh, but instead, Swayze's sort of holding a bit further out. Whether he just feels like he's got a lot of troops left, he's too early for him to retreat back to that very impenetrable spot. I don't know, but yeah, here we go. O Sworn up against a very weak Royal Guard, and that's going to be an unfair fight for the Egyptian player. We've got Celts fighting Celts. 
doing what they do best. Hack and slash at each other. But yeah, really, it's just a bit of a waste. Egypt should not send these guys up. I mean, these are the two healthy ones still, I guess. This is the weakened one. But yeah, the yeah, Royal Guard have been a little bit wasted. This one so has got 136 kills, granted. But they can definitely get more. They can get two, 300. The O-Sword net. Doing very, very well. I mean, the Osorn also being said, and it's a bit of a risk by Nervi, I, I will say. It's uh, kind of criticize Egypt. I feel like also the Nervi are setting up their infantry. There might be, surely there's less infantry still that could come up. But maybe there isn't. We are looking from the attacker's perspective, so we can't see all of the defenders. There aren't many cheaper troops. There's some Royal Peltas here still alive, but yeah, there might be Osorn and Royal Peltas and Pikes left on that flank. Obviously, Swaby still has quite a lot of lesser troops, but he's using them elsewhere. It looks like he's going in against the Pike Fangs here. Oh, well, it's a good move there by you to, you know, block this sort of this, this point with your Pikes, but it's just going to allow, yeah, the Blood Swan is going to come forward and jabby as much as possible. Where this general should just try and break through the Pike lines and go for the, uh, go for the swords. The pikes are trying to advance, trying to scare the blood swan off. There you go. As I say it, they do it. The javelins come in, they're trying to inflict as so much damage, and there you go. Just as the pikes get within like range of the blood swan, they, they retreat to those tricky Germans. And yeah, the Hellenic Royal Guard are going to. Uh, Pull back as they should. Really, they should have a screen here of infantry. Yeah, the legionaries here should really protect them. The uh, pike should be supporting. They should really be defending that flank. I'd also get the pikes over here. I think this is where you're going to need them for the real push. Let's just have something else to defend over here. Like, have Galatia just defend this against Swaby. He's done an okay job so far against Swaby. Yeah, the attackers really sending in very minimal forces right now. They're not really, not really attempting to do too much more than just you know sending tiny little units of salmonites to just try and weaken this host swarm with cycle charges, which is a, a good move, but it's just time consuming, um, and you know you have to be very patient. So we're going to see Galatia though go in. He looks like he's sending in more than just depleted units. He's quite a few units here that have been sent in almost amounted to a full unit of uh, Galatian Legionnaires. And they're certainly lesser than the Oathsworn. But they'll put up a good fight. They'll put up a good fight. They are going to try and cut through these guys as much as possible. There you go, you can see, yeah, it looks like Carthage getting ready with some large units, some Libyans are going forward. And it looks like we're going to have a bit of a missile fight over here. And yeah, Cretan archers now being sent over here to try and, you know, send the uh, Blood Swarm packing, sending them back towards their own lines. There is a lot of Swaby troops still alive. It's a real shame that they've lost their general, really, because these guys obviously going to have less morale now, so it means they'll break earlier. And they have so many of them left. It'd be a real, real uh, tricky problem here for the attackers, this flank. How they, how they play that. All the Oswald need to do is just hold on and try and win as many fights as possible. Royal Peltas actually got sent in and the Oswald have been pulled back. So fresher troops going into both sides trying to cycle out their troops. Trying to keep everyone fresh. The only thing is you lose so many, I feel like you lose so many troops by pulling troops out. You just like you see so many like you see the animation so many men get cut down as they fall back i just don't know if it's really worth it some nights here yeah they're, go they're gonna die i think in this one i don't think they can survive another one yeah there you go. they broke them but they got 274 kills they did very well they some nights always do very well especially if they've got that many chevrons on them looks like we're gonna see Libid infantry going in next, maybe your mercenary noble fires. These guys are a bit bloodied up, actually. Didn't realize they'd seen action, but they got 131 kills. Yeah, doing okay so far. 
You've got the Kimberly Bow Women over here. They're actually shooting into the uh, Hellenic Royal Guard here, doing some damage to them. And uh, yeah, that is going to be a problem here for Egypt. I don't know why he's got them so far, far forward. I understand he's trying to block this choke point. Just let Carthage do it with the Samnites. Or yeah, like Galatia do it with those Legionnaires. Like if Swaby wants to be aggressive, bring up the Pikes. Um, if he's going to then go into melee, bring up the Pikes. And you can get some kills while you're in melee. But don't just have him stand there and blocking that uh, choke point. We've got more Fierce Swords here. I thought we were out of these guys. But yeah, more Fierce Swords going in. No, the eyes managed to find a few dregs, a few reserves of lesser troops. And the uh, Royal Peltas, they look like they are winning hand over fist against the Galatians. Seeing a lot of Galatians fall here, but it's just a weakened unit. These guys have seen them in the faction already. There you go, they route. 196 kills though, not too bad, you know, for a legionnaire. And looks like uh, Seleucus were about to be very aggressive there. Can the Egyptians take advantage of that? They're kind of breaking formation a little bit. There you go. This is a fairly fresh Galatian Royal Guard going in. Both in energy and also numbers. These might be able to cut through the uh, cut through these Royal Peltas quite easily. We'll see what how they do. Libyan infantry here. Starting to lose though against the Fierce Swords. I don't know if that's because they were trying to attack that Royal Peltas instead. I don't know. Might be why they're losing. Maybe they just really struggle against Fierce Swords. I mean, they have more melee attack to the Fierce Swords than the uh, Libyan infantry. They are fairly. I mean, this one's fairly healthy still. For this stage of the game, anyway, it's healthy. Javelins coming in. Those sworn here, you know, trying to just, you know, use every weapon available to them before they have to use their swords. I'm seeing the Kimberly Bow women now are getting focused down. So those Cretans there showing their superiority, but the Hellenic Royal Guard, my gosh, not a single kill, and they are being focused down. This is a very expensive unit, as I say. This is just Egypt burning money, uh, really, just by bringing these out. You could have just brought cheaper ones. I mean, they do have obviously lots of extra armor and stuff, so it makes them much more difficult to kill. But yeah, you've just lost a whole unit of Hellenic Royal Guard there. I'd fall the other one back before it falls victim to the same sort of fate. Back over on this side here. The fighting is certainly getting intense. And there's certainly larger blobs now for the defenders being sent in. There's multiple units here the defenders have. The Galatians going to need some reinforcements, I think. Surprised the defenders haven't got any archers up here, but maybe because of this massive... Arch Archer sort of battery. I don't know if any of them actually have ammo. The Syrians still have ammo. Uh, so do these Cretan archers here. I think all of them do actually. Yeah, wow. They all have ammunition left. So that's another sort of ace up their sleeve that the attackers have. Is they have a lot of archer ammo left here. They could shoot things down like the Royal Peltas General. Or just shoot into the side of this combat. I mean, if they can break through here, I think it's GG really. I mean, there's still a pikeman as well you want to deal with. You'll probably shoot, and they can see it. So they're probably thinking, we need to wait and save our ammo for that. I don't know how much ammo they have left. It could just be a minuscule amount. So they might be wanting to combine all of their ammo to try and take out that one pike unit. We'll see. Galatia, I just realized, also has this general all the way back here. And Galatia, I think, has finally woken up and realized he's got some more legionnaires he needs to get inside this, this building, oh, inside this uh, city. And the uh, skirmish is over there as well. They need to get forward. It could be quite useful. And, uh, we've got some Korean archers that have been sacrificed to the Germans. I don't know if that's really a wise idea. They could be, you know, useful last sort of... If it comes to like sort of a last stand and sort of like a... Eh, like a couple of hundred men left. 
these Cretans could make the difference in a little flank. So I'm not a big fan of just throwing stuff away like this. I mean, send it into an actual melee fight, maybe like the one over on that far side, but don't just send it on its own to be sacrificed. And there, look at that. Swordmaster has managed to engage. The Pikes are going to try and get around these guys, and the Pikes are in danger of being threatened. In danger of being flanked here, is what I was trying to say. In danger of being threatened. I'm sure they're being threatened. It's war. It's total war. Come on, boys, what are you doing? Get around. There you go, there you go. That's an encircle complete there, and the Pikes are dead. They're pretty much dead. They've been sacrificed and left by their allies. Carthage is falling back. His Bale Oaks thing is here, actually. Uh, a little bit vulnerable. Yeah, it's got a general behind that I guess can support. Looks like we're going to see mercy Salmonites have come down and deal with those Salmonites. Uh, steal those sword masters. Yeah, the pikes are pretty much dead. We've got 60 kills, but they're not going to get any more, and they're actually coming out of phalanx. And they're getting jabby to pieces instead. Oh, that's an execution. Yeah, there you go. Two Hellenic Royal Guard between them have got 66 kills, and that is it. What a waste of the uh, of those resources there by Egypt. His Karani Naxman general has also been thrown in. And his oath sworn opponent is raking in the kills. Axman here. Shaken, but not quite stirred yet. They are probably going to be soon, but this is becoming quite a thin line here for the uh, defenders. We have, I think these two Oswald units are the final ones. The other ones are already committed here. Seleucids still have a couple of units that are healthy, but I don't think there's much else. And what is this over here? Oh, we've got a noble horse. That is, uh, how is this Egyptian unit got here, by the way? How is this man? Did it break through here? Surely not. How has I even got this side? Uh, their generals just died as well for Egypt. But yeah, I don't know how this unit just flank around. Uh, surely the Swabia are blocking all this way in. I don't know how it's managed this. Is it whether it pulled through? Whether it's just it has managed to sneak around and I didn't see how it managed? I don't know. But yeah, these uh, Galatians are about to get sacrificed here. More free kills for the uh, Swaby, really. And 71 kills, yeah, nothing too impressive there. For that Royal Guard, and you can see the Noble Horse here. Uh, for the Novii, just going to keep rear charging it and supporting their Celtic, oh, sorry, their Germanic ally. Here we go, a decent charge. That's all that's needed, and there you go. That should be the death of that uh, Galatian Royal Guard. And yeah, Swaby's now being offensive on this flank here. He's trying to encircle the attackers. And we've got those uh, new legionary units landing, those healthy units. Uh, I don't know why this general has not yet been brought up. He needs to be brought in. Every man is going to be needed for this attack, I feel like. There really isn't a lot left when it comes to sort of attacks. And so we've got a noble fighter, a couple of legionnaires. Uh, the archers, I don't know if uh, they need to be using their ammo. I also would be using it to try and like shoot like into the flank, like loop over here and shoot, shoot into the side. Get side shots rather than like frontal shots. But yeah, it looks like a bit of a mess. Whether the uh, attackers could maybe slow down their attack on that side, turn reinforcements around here, defeat Swaby, and then go back to fighting Nervii and the Seleucids. Whether that would work, obviously Nervii and Seleucids wouldn't just allow them to go and beat up their ally, they would get involved. It's a, it's a move they could try. Right now, the uh, Swaby are ripping through these Samnites. They're in the rear guard. And they're threatening to obviously encircle the attackers and finish them off. And actually, the Swaby have pulled out of that combat here. And they're trying to go up this uh, up here and try and deal with the. Uh, Korean archers and Carthage has allowed him to do it, but I guess he's had no choice because another swordmaster's come in. If Carthage needs to get his uh, archers out of there, the swordmasters are in danger. And yeah, he's, uh, he's turning around more noble fighters to deal with that issue. Looks like the general over here is also just 
help route a bunch of sword masters here. So yeah, those are uh, reinforcing. Oh no, these aren't the reinforcing legionnaires at all. Just some other other ones have been kept behind. The reinforcement ones are over here. They're coming forward. They might be useful. I mean, what's their melee attack? A 50 with all those uh, chevrons being added on. Nervii here with his archers. I don't think we've really seen Nervii's archers. Maybe we have, I just haven't realized. But yeah, they're having a bit of an archer duel. The Galakons is here. Arcana probably loses. They're very light. Uh, going up against light skirmishers. Or light archers. But yeah, they'll probably lose that fight there. They don't care. They're not even shooting them. They're just shooting the Galatian Legionnaires. And it's probably the better idea. At this stage of the game, infantry is going to be key. It's looking a bit chaotic in the back here. I won't lie. With Swaby obviously pushing on. Some very blurred lines where the front line is here for Carthage. They're sending back their noble fighters. And they should overwhelm the Swaby units here. There's nothing that really that can stop them. They're very, very top tier units. Really what they wanted to be using against the Oswald, I'd imagine. It's now been forced to turn around and deal with these pesky Germans. Fighting in these streets here, Galatians and Germans fighting tooth and nail. And yeah, the Germans, even they've got no general, they don't give a damn. This sword mass here, 100 men left and got, has 213 kills. Just done very well. They're still cycling out units here. Yeah, the sword masses have been getting some relatively decent kills, to be fair. And you can see and another offense is, is being made here. The Oswald have been cycled out, the Royal Peltas has been brought in. We have two pike units back here. They are shooting them a little bit now, are the attackers. This one, they've lost one man in that pike unit there. But this could be a problem um, because there's no pikes left for the attackers. Uh, so they have nothing to just like, use pike to pike sort of action. And they are using that ammunition now on other units like Syrian archers and the Gallic hunters as well. So that pressure ammun ammunition is being used elsewhere other than shooting those archers. And right now, I mean, the only other option would be to break through the Swaby and then flank around, uh, like do a big flank around and threaten the settlement from another direction. So you get around the pikes and try and stretch the defenders like that. That is kind of the only other avenue I can see that they could possibly use to try and break through. And if anyone's going to do it, it'll be these noble fighters from Carthage. It looks like they're kind of struggling as well, actually. They look like they might be losing. Yeah, they are. Look at this being absolutely slaughtered by the uh, Blood Sworn here. I mean, they got 241 kills. They've done their bit. And fresher ones are arriving. Fresh noble fighters. But it's not good. Not good to see Saul Lake Carthage using up his precious reserves here. Deal with a rear fight. A rear line fight. Which no one really wants to be fighting. And the noble, uh, noble cavalry coming in here. Looks like they're trying to help out. Maybe just you know rally the boys. The general being nearer, but it doesn't look like they're. Really having too much uh, effectiveness. And look at this. After all this uh, fighting, all these bodies that are here, the defenders are going to give up this choke point and they're going to fall back uh, to another sort of uh, point here, which is still fairly defensible. Like you can sort of uh, use angles as well with the archers that the uh, defenses are at. So like this archer unit can shoot into the back of any of the units here that engage that Seleucid general and the O-Swarm. And vice versa. I don't know if there's any archers over on this side that can really help the uh, pikemen, but they could do the same if they wanted to on that side. And uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like Galatius kind of stalled with his with his troops. He doesn't know really what to do. Uh, he has got the uh, Celtic skirmish back here. I think this has full ammunition still, so you can use that to maybe go through those pikemen. And look at that, Swaby has mass routed, and the balance power has shifted massively in favour of the uh, 
attackers. There is not much um, that can really stop the uh, Carthaginians. I don't know why they haven't just decided to flank up here, try and draw some of these units away. Because this is this can't be defended this uh, point here if Carthage comes up that way, or even Galatia. Just send up a, like a couple of units, and you can really sort of like stretch these guys instead of doing a frontal assault, which is not suicidal, but it's going to be costly. And we'll see what happens. The pikes are going down. And they're going to start kebabbing those Galatians. And, but first we've got to take out these tiny little arch units. I like how the Galatians didn't even bother to charge into them. They're like, ah, they're not even worth our time. Yeah, they aren't really. They're, uh, they're routing almost immediately. Three kills for those Galatians. And here we go. The pikes now going in. They're going to start kebabbing these boys. And the Galatians just fall back. They don't want to stay here. They can't get close to those pikemen. It's phalangites. And there's a gap here. Look at this. The uh, gap is already opening up. Uh, the, the pikes are being drawn out of this choke point. They need to fall back. There you go. Get back into formation. Javelin's going in, doing as much damage as possible to these pikes. They're actually going to try and charge. That guy went a little bit too far. He's like, ja! and you got a kill. Nice one, man. Now get back to your unit. Yep, yeah, there you go. He's being poked on his way back through. <laughs> there you go. Should be okay now. The Royal Peltas the General did try to try and come out and support, and you can see, yeah, the Galatians want to keep jabbing, jabbing these men. And it looks like Carthage now is bringing up his archers. He must still have ammunition on these guys here. Yeah, the bows are out, so they still have ammo. And they need to start shooting into this near pikeman unit here. Just make them bleed. Yeah, the one dimensional, really one dimensional from the attackers here. They could, like, start sending this general, like the noble horse, just send him around the flank. Go all the way around here if they wanted to. And start threatening from behind. I mean, obviously you might get the attention of the Noble Horse General here, but it's worth a go. Stretch them. And the cap point's right here, so you could just, like, yeah, flank on around. Also, just same here. Just go up this simple street here. Like, the defenders can't defend what they're doing right now, and also that street, really. They don't have the numbers. It would work. Uh, it looks like uh, Slukids, I don't know what they're doing with their pikes, but they're all already falling back. 78 left on that one, 142 on this one. Yeah, so there's a gap opening up here. Galatia needs to get into that gap soon. Whether they're trying to bait it and try and get the uh, Royal, like, bait in the unit and the Royal Peltas is going to side charge them? I don't know, but I don't think they should have fallen back from where they were here. I think they were fine here with the defenders. By actually falling back, they made this a lot harder to defend because you could have had more units in the front line. But yeah, that is a problem. And yeah, they are now trying to go back in. You can see the uh, Osor now are trying to engage these units. They are going to route some of these uh, Libyan infantry almost immediately. The Pikes are trying to come in, trying to do their little bit. Still getting shot to pieces though. And they're getting a rear charge as well from Libyan Infantry. And uh, yeah, that is probably GG for that Pike unit there. It might be GG for the defenders. I don't know. It's hard to say. Ban's power is very much shifted in favor of the uh, of the attackers. But it could all still go wrong. One general being killed for the attackers could be costly. And those one don't know when to give in. They don't know when to stop fighting. They'll fight till they're dead on their knees. More Galatians coming in. It's relentless. Legionnaires, these uh, healthy legionnaires with uh, all their silver chevrons starting to uh, turn these fights around by looks at Oswan losing here. The pike's still alive, but they're getting shot to pieces. They've got 55 kills. Really, really poor from them. But uh, it's just because pike's so easy to counter with missiles, it just kind of makes them almost redundant, I feel like, in sieges. It's, they're quite a good ace to bring. Because if you can, like, make a, a team usable their ammunition, and then you can hold in a choke point. 
They are absolute killer. Syrian archers going in, trying to. I think they've got round the side there, trying to get these archers. There are still some uh, Syrian heavy archers alive there. They need to be taking out these Cretans. I mean, it's a bit late now, but that's the sort of support they should have been giving. Sort of support in their uh, own, like their own side by shooting enemy archers, just taking them out. The Nervii general has been committed in here, a horseman against horsemen, as uh, also the Galatian general joins the fray. But again, nothing just went around this corner here, and I think we're about to see a mass route as the uh, noble horse general breaks, and also so does his oak sworn, and it looks like uh, Seleucid general is actually going to be the last one to stand. But I imagine he should probably wave and break here with army losses coming in. And there you go, the attackers are going to win, but my gosh! Did they make a bit of a meal of it, I feel like. Uh, definitely was not the greatest teamwork, but in the end, sheer brute force from Carthage and Galatia managed to win the day for their side. And we'll end the replay and have a quick look at the own results. This was sent in by uh, MO. So, yeah, a really, really cool replay. Um, so, yeah, nicely done by him and his team. He got 3,500 kills with his army. He got 225 kills with this giant ballista here. I mean, uh, the Cretan Arch is getting 184 kills, 185, 188. Some solid kills there with the uh, yeah the Baalex things and the Cretan Archers. His general got 135 kills, which is also so solid. And it's got barely any losses. Uh, Libyan Infantry is 150, uh, 150 kills, 140, 233 with this one here. The uh, Noble Fighters, 342 kills, 273. Some solid kills there for them. Samnites, 271, 274. And then... The Scutiari here, 221 kills. Very, very nicely done. Then we have Jason playing as Galatia. 139 kills those skirmishers, even though they joined late into the game. Still got some solid kills. His Legionnaires, which he spammed out. 120 kills, 171, 187. Uh, the 196. Um, but yeah, they did pretty solid. Uh, to to be honest, and then never here playing as Egypt went in a little early, but still did very well, still getting over 2,000 kills. Um, but yeah, I wonder if he got, went in a little later whether he, uh, his allies could have supported his thorax push a bit more. But I mean, the thorax did okay 200 kills with this one, 158 with another there, but yeah, a lot still not getting 100 kills, which is sad to see. The Quranian Axeman outscoring a lot, getting 116, and his Galatian Royal Guard again, also a bit disappointing 183 kills, 136, and then you've got the uh. Cretan Archers here, 178 kills, 281 kills there. Then we have uh, Boomer Mike playing as Nervii, uh, getting 137 kills with his Scorpion here. Uh, his Archers, 143 kills. His Oswan, 301, 183, some solid kills for them. Uh, Fierce Swords, which he spammed out, really, 148 kills, 126. And then the uh, Celtic Warriors down here, 183 kills with them. Then we have Fair Dewell playing as... Um, the Seleucids, 206 kills with his Royal Peltas here, 201 with another. These guys did very, very well, generally. Uh, 250 uh, kills there with that one as well, very good. And then the Syrian Heavy Archers, 117 kills, 182. The Hillman kind of died, but, you know, they just were chaff uh, for the sort of Royal Peltas to come in and really save the day, even though they couldn't quite today. And then the Thorax Swords here, 156 kills. Then we have Captain America playing as, as a Swaby. Unfortunately, losing his general, which kind of cost him his army, I think, a little bit. But his sword mass is very well. 257 kills, 222, 183 with another there. The blood sworn did fairly well, you know, 135, 123. They made themselves a real nuisance in that battle. They certainly did. But there you go, guys. That is today's siege battle. If you did enjoy this Rome 2 clash, then do remember to leave a like. Subscribe if you're around here. If you want to see more Rome 2 stuff, do let me know in the comments. And with that, subscriber. Uh, like hit and like button as well, you know, and all that support. And But yes, hopefully some glorious sieges are showing up on your screen now. Go and check those ones out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.